Boyd Matson joins us now to wrap up his series on the crooners with a man who he says started it all. Now, the dictionary says a crooner is somebody who sang in an evenly modulated, slightly exaggerated manner. Nobody did it before Rudy Valley? That's what he told me. He says before he came along, all the singers had trained voices, something of a quasi-operatic style. Valley claims to be the first to sing as he speaks, and that's his definition of a crooner. The Fleischman G. Sauer, presenting a variety entertainment directed by Rudy Valley. My time is your time. 1929, two days after the crash of Wall Street, Rudy Valley went on the air with the Flashman's Variety Hour. I owe everybody, this is Rudy Valley and Company. For the next 10 years, millions of people tuned in every week to be lifted out of their depression. I forget it by December. Will you remember? Valley was first a saxophone player and band leader. Singing was an afterthought. But it was the voice that took him out of small clubs and into the hearts of women everywhere. One man, this is a, this is a very important columnist in either the Times or the Herald Tribune, is that when the guy sings to these girls, it's like putting a red-hot poker through a mold of butter. I'll call you sweetheart and always pray. I was the first to sing as you speak. And the voice was thin, nasal, true in pitch. My phrasing, I flatter myself, probably no in the world have a phrase a song any better than I. One thing Valley's voice did not do was carry well. So early in his career, he became the first person to use a megaphone to sing indoors. The megaphone remained a trademark long after its only function was to decorate the museum in Valley's home. The museum, which houses the megaphones and saxophones and microphones of Valley's career, reflects his excessive confidence in himself. He says he began the collection while still a teenager, knowing that one day he would be famous. Either in law or music or, sh or show business, running a theater, somewhere in the show business field, I knew I was going to be outstanding. That's why I started making a scrapbook at the age of 14. If your family wants a bit of information, say that I'm doing swell. The success was more than anyone could have imagined. Nightclubs, radio, records, stage shows, and finally movies. It was a transition Elvis would emulate 30 years later. But as with all crooners, eventually someone new comes along to capture the hearts of the next generation. For Rudy Valley, the challenge came from Bean Crosby. And I hear a record found a gun in a five and ten cent store by Crosby, and I heard that glory for that. Oh, Jesus. Goodbye, Rudy. Goodbye, Rudy. And I knew. So I said, boys, this guy's going to knock me right off my fanny. It's in the broadcast from the Rochester. Groundhog. Groundhog. Stand old Andy. Although replaced as the number one palpitator of hearts, Valley continued to perform on the nightclub circuit until he emerged in the 60s as one of the stars in How to Succeed in Business Without Really Trying. Soon all America will be listening to Rudy Valley sing again. He has just recorded the television commercials for the movie Airplane 2. It's the strangest way we know to tell you all. All together now. It is a familiar setting for those who grew up with Valley. In 1931, he used the same tune and costume to woo Betty Coed. Betty Coed is loved by every college boy. But I'm the one who loved by Betty Coed. My partner, my partner, it's dancing time. Nostalgia seems to be the essence of Valley's work these days. He has a two-hour one-man show in which he sings along with old recordings, shows slides from the past, and recounts tales of show business from the 20s and 30s. Most of these stories also appear in the two books he has written, or in the one he's trying to get published, about 56 of the most famous women he's known. We just seem to synchronize and sympathize. I never felt that I was a handsome, attractive person, although I have some pictures that are fairly attractive. But I've known probably more women than any man in Italian history or anyone in the world. I need you, believe me, I need you. 
Well, we can't confirm the validity of that last statement, but Valley certainly has attracted hordes of screaming fans. He was the first superstar crooner, and only a very few have since matched the magnitude of his appeal. 81 years old, and he still likes to perform. Incidentally, in case anybody wonders, when he started that radio show 53 years ago, he was paid $4,000 a week. Ouch. And he didn't really have that multimedia show set up in his home, did he? It is set up all the time. In case you drop by, he'll put it on for you. Thank you. Good series, Boyd, on the Thank corners. You.